Yikes. Talk about awkward. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst Saturday Night Live hosts ever. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at some of the most awkward, bumbling, unprofessional, and unfunny hosts in Saturday Night Live's history. We're ranking our picks based on a combination of factors, including but certainly not limited to their awkward stage presence and terrible acting. Number 10. Frank Zappa Frank Zappa may be a stellar musician, but a suitable host he is not. Zappa hosted way back in October of 1978, and he made a total fool out of both himself and the show. Thank you, and remember I'm reading this off these cards underneath this camera here. Thank you. It's an awesome responsibility being selected out of millions of people to become the banner of NBC's new look. While we understand that SNL is meant to be funny, there's still an expected level of professionalism, and Zappa did not adhere to it. He constantly broke the fourth wall and even addressed the cue cards, which resulted in his ban from the show. I am a musician. And I'm giving a concert. No, that should be out there. That should be. Zappa came across as an extremely uncomfortable and risky presence that could undermine the show at any moment, and the crew allegedly hated him for it. Number 9. Milton Berle Mentioning the Milton Berle episode to a cast member of the 1979 season may just give them unwanted flashbacks. I'm so unlucky if they sawed a woman in half, I get the part that eats. Would you believe that? <laughs> I'm going bad. I'm a real loser. Burl was allegedly a massive pain both in front of the camera and backstage. He had no qualms with completely taking over the show, and tended to both hog the camera and upstage his fellow cast members. He also insisted on ad-libbing, made outdated jokes, including doing spit takes. <laughs> he then ended the show with a mushy performance of September Song and a pre-planned standing ovation, much to the anger of Lorne Michaels. In short, everyone involved seemingly hated him, and he was never invited back. Number 8. January Jones January Jones is often considered one of the weakest links of the otherwise stellar cast of Mad Men, but you could argue that Betty Draper is meant to be rather emotionless and boring. However, even January's most diehard fans had trouble defending her SNL hosting gig. Do it, say Don. Yes, say Don. Don. Say Don. Don. Say Don. Say Don. Fine. Done. Yes! <laughs> she carried the show with that same bland personality. And while that may work for Betty, it does not work for live comedy. As if her uninspired live delivery wasn't bad enough, she also stumbled over lines and showed audible confusion regarding the cameras. <laughs> Critics thought she sucked the energy out of the show, earning her place in history as one of SNL's most awkward personalities. I'm Joan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Number 7. Adrian Brody Adrian Brody is a terrific case in proving that drama and live comedy require completely different talents. While Brody may be an acclaimed Academy Award-winning actor, he is easily one of Saturday Night Live's worst and most awkward hosts. Okay, go ahead, thank you. Yes, here I go to get it. Okay, go ahead, get it. Go ahead, get it. Go, you go, 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 you go get it. While he wasn't particularly funny throughout the whole show, it was his introduction of musical guest Sean Paul that really angered people. Ah, oh, you man, Jamaica, man, you know, you know, rush stuff, all right, you know. You got the old family in the house, you know. You know, me got, me got Sean Peter, you know, you got Sean Paul, you got Sean Mary. Brody allegedly went off script and introduced Paul while wearing fake dreadlocks and a Jamaican accent, a joke that was not approved or even known about. To make matters worse, it proved to be unfunny and offensive. The joke reportedly got Brody banned from the show, and he has since become a part of SNL legend. Number 6. Tom Green Tom Green is certainly an acquired taste. <laughs> the crass Green was invited to host back in November 2000 when he was at the height of his popularity, and it went about as poorly as you'd expect from the infamously odd performer. While we suppose the producers knew they were taking a risk when hiring the controversial comedian, it certainly did not pay off. Green brought his brand of lowbrow, uncomfortable humor to the live sketch show, and the two types of comedy failed to mix. Next to his practiced sketch comedian co-stars, 
Green's farcical approach to acting came across as childish and unfunny. Number 5. Lindsay Lohan What makes Lindsay Lohan's terrible hosting gig from 2012 so outlandish is that she'd already proven that she could do it well. Yeah, can I see your eyes, please? <laughs> you know... She's good. Keenan, I should be checking your eyes. Oh, I'll save you the trouble. I've been stoned since Good Burger. Lohan had hosted Saturday Night Live three times going into this gig, so expectations were fairly high despite the state of her career at the time. What could have been a big win for the actress instead went down as another missed opportunity. I'm sorry, um, is everything okay? She had next to no energy throughout the night, and her line delivery was extremely stilted and boring. To make matters worse, it was clear that she was reading off cue cards. And like anyone obviously reading from a card, Lohan was emotionless, stiff, and horrifically boring to watch. I do get the feeling that everybody thinks I'm gonna screw something up. No, no, hey, look at me. Everybody here believes in you, everyone. We wouldn't have you back otherwise. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Number four, Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton was a bit of a controversial pick, as many people were hesitant regarding her lack of acting or comedic experience. Well, they were right to hesitate. Ken and I are in love. Hilton was not only unfunny and incredibly unprofessional, she was also allegedly a huge pain behind the scenes as well. Tina Fey told Howard Stern that Hilton was, quote, a piece of shit who took herself too seriously and was, quote, proud of how dumb she is. She also told him that Hilton was just generally difficult. Geez, you gotta be really unprofessional to have the otherwise sweet Tina Fey say something like that about you. We've got a great show tonight. Keen is here. <laughs> Again, her words, not ours. Number three, Donald Trump. We're not adding Trump to this list solely because he's Trump. People thought he was truly terrible on the show, and so he earned the spot. <laughs> Trump hosted the show twice, once in 2004 and again in 2015 while he was running for president. And while the episode garnered very high ratings, Trump simply could not let go of his ego for an hour and have some fun. I said to the writers of this sketch, keep it modest, okay? It's better to start with low expectations. That way, you have nowhere to go but up. The episode seemed far too sterilized and pre-planned, as if the people in his team had vetoed 90% of the material the writers must have surely come up with. Critics also felt Trump made for a dreadful host due to his horrible comedic timing. Number two, Justin Bieber. While it may have been popular to hate on Bieber in 2013, we like to think that viewers kept an open mind when it came to his hosting of Saturday Night Live. However, even the most open-minded viewers must admit that his gig was horrific. All right, uh, abs, now do the abs. Yeah, there you go. Bieber acted like he was the hottest thing on the planet, which admittedly he kind of was, and came across as if he did not care at all about his performance or his fellow cast members' comfort. Bill Hader allegedly called out Bieber's diva behavior, deeming him difficult to get along with and singling out his enormous entourage who doted on his every move. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. They said that, it, that when this kind of thing happens, that it will all come, it will all come together, you know? I don't know, guys. I just don't think I'm cut out for this whole swimming thing. I mean, I just pictured myself on the starting block and I got so scared I, I thought I fudged my speedo. And eating anything no matter where you find it. <laughs> Yum! New Yorkie! Number one, Steven Seagal. Action stars don't often make for great comedians. However, that didn't stop SNL from hiring Steven Seagal as host back in 1991. I couldn't help overhearing what you guys were saying, you know? Oh, well, you were so quiet, you know? How long were you back there? We were just talking, you know? Yeah, you know. Seagal was never known for his acting chops, and sadly, when taking the spotlight on Saturday Night Live, he didn't surprise anyone. Bad acting is one thing, but he was an alleged pain in the butt behind the scenes. That makes me very nervous, you know? People who see my daughter should have plans. He apparently complained about not understanding the jokes that were given to him, pitched terrible and inappropriate sketch ideas, and was reportedly rude to both the cast and writers. Perhaps the most interesting, a picture of you listening to the President of the United States on speaker, speakerphone as he reveals his part in the conspiracy. When it comes to horrible SNL hosts, no one competes with the boring and misguided mess that was Steven Seagal. Do you agree with our picks? 
Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.